Juni. This is Connor. He's our washed college bowler coming out of retirement. And we're going to go over his lane play, his ball choices, and his physical game. So why would he get roasted in front of my massive YouTube audience? Well, in exchange for letting me make this video, we're going to get him some coaching. From the best coach in the world! Oh, not me. This guy. But you gotta stay to the end to see who it is. Connor's biggest complaint is that he sprays the ball everywhere and he can't post a shot consistently. On top of that, he's disappointed that he hasn't shot an honor score since he was back in diapers at the tender age of 15. So let's get into breaking down his game. Analyzing Bowler. Connor has a rev rate of 415 and a ball speed of 18 miles an hour off his hand. So he doesn't need any help generating power, he's got plenty in his game. He just needs some more accuracy and then he'll be a monster. Connor's ball of choice on the fresh is the Eternity Pie, an ace him with 44 points of diff and 11 points of intermediate diff at 14 pounds. The rather low intermediate diff gives it a rounder shape off the back of the pattern, which overall I think is a good choice given his style. I didn't get his PAP, but his layout puts the pin over the bridge and the mass bias looks like it's about halfway to his vowel. I really like the colors on this ball because the white is on the axis before the ball makes its move on the back end. I'll zoom in and replay on this next shot so you can see. Any kind of distinct visual cues on the ball can help you stay on top of transition, thus increasing your carry percentage. It's similar to my Black Widow 3.0 layout, where the path of migration goes through the thumb hole. Game 2. He switches to an IQ Tour, a symmetric piece with 34 points of diff at 14 pounds. The cleaner cover helps him get through the transition while keeping a round shape in the back end. The layout on his IQ has a similar pin position above the bridge, which makes the ball change very easy to make. The IQ Tour is a very solid choice for anyone who bowls in tougher conditions. It was my second ball out of my bag in college, especially when we bowled in flatter patterns. The lower diff provides more control of the pocket, and it takes well to surface changes. These days I carry around a Venom Shock, both provide the same kind of shape, the only difference being the cover stock. The IQ is a little cleaner, and the Venom is a little quicker response to the friction. Notice how Connor doesn't use a spare ball. He's pretty good at taking his hand out of the ball and rolling it towards its target. To be fair, he would have missed that one either way. Here's where his physical game gets in the way. He's got late timing, which makes it troublesome to get his hips facing towards the pin at the point of release. Since that last shot went heavy on the head pin, and the ball continued through the pin deck towards the 7, he decides to make the ball change, throwing the IQ Ruby. He misses his launch angle, causing the ball to skid past the mid lane and come off the pattern too far down lane. His next shot with the Ruby is much better. Right on top of the line he played with the IQ Tour, it gives him a little bit more length, and it's a little softer off the spot. Which is exactly what we would expect with the slightly longer pin to pap on his Ruby. Before filming, he was concerned that he was going to miss every single pin, but as long as he's not too late on his timing, he should be able to get good direction on his shot. Ever since he made that ball change, he's been struggling with his execution. The only shot that struck was that one on the inside line, but it hit kind of light. See what I'm talking about? Over the place. If he splits the difference down lane, I bet he would strike. But at this point, he's going to try his luck with another ball change. Going to his Zen, it's a higher diff symmetric with 51 points of diff, so he should get more flair. He wants to open up his angles and get it off the gutter down lane. The layout on his Zen is identical to his IQ Tour, pin above the bridge. So it should shape similarly. The cover is stronger so it really digs into the pattern compared to his Ruby. That's really giving him the confidence to send the ball left to right, even on that last one where he's pushing the limits of recovery for that ball. So he makes a small adjustment inside to keep the ball just left of the friction that he built up. Despite his physical game issues, he's certainly been executing his shots this game. Oh wait, what does his shirt say? VBBC? VBBC really stands for? Very big black Cadillac. Ow. Connor missed way inside on that last one down lane, but he got away with it. He makes the adjustment on this next one, but got a very sharp entry angle into the pocket. He gives it a little bit more room down lane, but unfortunately wraps a 10. Good run bro. Tough break. That was definitely one of his better shots. He cursed himself on the 10th. He turned to me and said, watch me go through the nose and leave a split. And look what happens. What can I say? 
Well executed. <laughs> Game 4, he switches to a Hustle USA, which again is softer and rounder off the spot. Unfortunately, my iPhone glitched when recording that second shot, so the footage is lost. The Hustle USA has a hybrid cover stock, so it will try to read a little sooner than the Zen's Pearl cover stock, but the core is a lower diff, which gives it a rounder shape off the end of the pattern. His layout on the Hustle is pinned over the bridge, leaning towards the ring finger a little bit. A lot of his layouts are pretty close, so he creates diversity in his bag through bowling ball choices. So far you've seen him throw the Eternity Pie, IQ Tour, Ruby, Zen, Hustle USA, and the last ball in his bag is an IQ 78U. So I guess you could say he's a high IQ bowler. So I'll give him the bowling nerd stamp of approval. So what do you think about his bag? Is there anything missing? What pieces should we add? What pieces could we take away? I would like to see him throw something with a high intermediate diff, like a DNA coil since he likes SPI products. But maybe we can convince him to get something like the DV8 hater. Since he's slightly rev dominant, the high intermediate diff could likely roll out for him, so we'll need to put a layout on it with a large first angle to help him get down the lane. With his current bag, he has a lot of symmetric bowling balls, which have a large hook window, so I'm thinking having a piece with a smaller hook window could be beneficial. And if you don't know what I mean by hook window, check out my Archetype Hybrid review, where I showcase three bowling balls with three unique hook windows. Going into his last game, he's opted to throw the IQ78U. Rather than continuing to move left to right on the pattern, this allows him to go straighter up the lane. And once again, he has a similar layout on his IQ78U, pin above the bridge. It's almost time for the big reveal. Did you recognize who this is? Who I would refer to as the best coach in the world? My bad, I made you miss that 10 pin, but I had to make room for the coach's intro. Okay, enough of that. It's Mark Baker. If you don't know who he is, well, chances are that he coached one of your favorite PBA bowlers at some point. He offers virtual coaching lessons online. And yeah, I totally asked if I could use his virtual coaching lesson in this video, and he was cool with it. So let's see what he had to say about Connor's game. Hey Connor, Mark Baker here. So I got your videos and I got your notes. So you tore your ACL and meniscus, but now you recovered. So your misses are in. So I looked at it, it is in your footwork. We're gonna look at your timing first, kind of do it in reverse order. Obviously you're a very strong guy. Let's just make it where you average 215 or more, just a little bit easier. So it's kind of tricky to measure your timing. Now that's really your timing spot. So you're very, very late. Doesn't happen on the West Coast very much. That's more of an East Coast thing. You're late. But watch what you do here. You kind of do a double slide on me. Now your foot's gonna go back up again. See that heel come up off the ground? And now you get it back down again. So if I measure there, you're in time, but the problem is your brain's where the ball wants to go, your chest's where it's gonna go. So the reason you have some pressure on here is you're so open because you pulled the ball up into your swing. Now you've gotta do this massive right there. So your hips never get back to square. You do manage to get your chest back and your hands behind the ball. That just takes a lot of work. You throw pretty good, like you triple four pin. Yeah, for nine, you carry right there, not too bad. If I'm, you know, pretty honest here, you're just a little bit late, right? Now, see, that's the, I've never had anybody have a flat slide. Now you're late. Foot go up in like a double slide, then you slide down again. So if I just measure there, you're in time, but you're a little too open. If you think Connor's confusing, wait until I send you this next guy. So, dude, I know one thing. You don't want to get in a fist fight with you. You got to be a pretty strong, dude, to hold the ball up like that and put a double slide on to get in time. Rotate those shoulders. I think your first step's a little too long when you're done. I like when your head is on top of your foot. So your head's quite a ways farther back. So first step, nice and straight. Second step, I'm not a big believer in crossover steps. Your crossover step's way too big. I want your crossover to step, stop right there. There, that's where I want your foot to go down. Your third step has to go left to clear room for your pivot step. I can actually see there on the, yep, see that? I can see the, 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 the toe of your third step coming in. So now there's nowhere for your pivot step to drop inside your head. Your pivot step goes right. There, here. See if I draw this line off your toe, it's on the outside of your head. So that's a tricky place to come from because your swing plane is not anywhere near where you want the ball to go. So you're just relying on two things. Tons of hand-eye coordination and the fact that you're really strong to average 215. 
You got a good enough release, you'd be averaging much more. It's just too much work to throw a good shot. Then your slide's actually straight, you're a little bit late. You have a lot of work to do there. You get them on the lane pretty good. Can't wait to see your next set of videos. Talk to you later, Connor. Thanks, Mark. I'm thinking we can give Connor a couple months and then we can check back in on his game. Hopefully we'll be able to get Connor back to his college bowling peak. I chose Connor for this video because he has late timing, and I have very early timing, making it hard for me to generate power. Back in November I did a virtual coaching lesson with Mark Baker, so stay tuned for my next video where I go over the changes to my game, and my next steps. And I'm not affiliated with Mark, I'm just a satisfied customer. If you made it to the end of the video, drop a like, drop a sub, and feel free to share this with a friend. Leagues are about to wrap up, so the summer is the perfect time to make substantial changes to your game. So good luck, go win your leagues, see ya.